I'm a big fan of Omnioth, and recently version 1.0 of Omnioth was released. Congratulations to Michael Blay and all contributors. There are a number of nice additions in this version, but in this episode I want to focus on this new strategy called Omnioth Identity. It allows users to uh, create an account through a password instead of going through an external provider. Well, let me show you how it works. So here's the Rails application we'll be working with, and I already have Omnioth set up here with a few providers. And so I can click on a provider such as Twitter, and it will ask me if I want to authorize the uh, signing in of this. And once I sign in, it grabs the profile information from Twitter and pulls it into this application. Now I'm signed in, I can log out and then sign in with a quick click to Twitter, and then it will sign in immediately like that. So this is really awesome how convenient this is, but what if the user doesn't want to sign in through one of these services? It would be nice if we give the user the option of creating a password and an account just directly through this site instead of using an external provider. Well, that's where OmniAuth Identity comes in, but before I get into adding that, let me first briefly walk you through this code so you can get a better idea of how this works at the moment. Now the source code here is based off of what I showed you in episode 241. So if you're unfamiliar with OmniAuth, I recommend you first watch that episode. However, there are some changes since version one has been released. One of the most significant changes is inside of the gem file here. Notice here that each provider now has its own separate gem for OmniAuth, so it's necessary to include each of the ones you want inside of your gem file. I think this is really great because now they can be maintained separately. Now the initializer for OmniAuth looks pretty much the same here. I'm just adding it as middleware here and adding a separate provider for each of the external providers I want. Now we also have this sessions controller here and it's the create action which gets triggered as the OmniAuth callback. And here we're just making a user based off of the OmniAuth hash and then storing the ID in a session. But let's check out this user model. So here inside of this from OmniAuth method which gets called, we are first checking if we have a user with that provider and user ID and returning it. Otherwise, we're going to create a new user from the OmniAuth hash, which just makes a user based off of that provider information. Now, one significant change in this OmniAuth hash is that it used to be called user info and is now just called info. So keep that in mind when you're upgrading to OmniAuth 1.0. And that's pretty much it. That's all that's necessary to handle authentication through OmniAuth. Pretty simple. So let's see what's involved in adding OmniAuth identity so we have an option to create an account if we don't want to use one of these services. The first step is to go to your gem file and add the OmniAuth identity gem here. Now this gem relies on bcrypt to do the password hashing, but it's currently not a dependency of the gem, so this will probably be fixed in the future, but in the meantime, it's necessary to add bcrypt Ruby to your gem file as well. You'll probably find a comment in your gem file that you can just uncomment to add it. Don't forget to run the bundle command to install the gems. And then you'll need to go to your OmniAuth config initializer file and add identity as a provider here. And we won't pass any other options for now. Now we'll also need to generate a new model here, which is where the login information will be stored. And by default, this is called identity, but you can customize that if you want to. So now we just label all the fields that we want to be in the registration form, such as our name, our email address, and uh, the password digest here, which is where the uh, hash password will be stored. And then migrate the database to uh, create that table. Now if you check out the readme for the OmniAuth identity gem here, you can see that they provide a class for this model to inherit from for various ORMs that you might use. So we can use the active record one here and just make sure it inherits from this class. So inside of our fresh new identity model here, Let's just paste in that class name, and that's all we'll do here for now. Now we're almost there. All that's left to do is make a link to that identity provider from this sign-in page right here. So here's what that sign-in template looks like. And at the bottom here, I'm just going to paste in some text saying, if you don't use one of these services, you can either create an account, which is going to auth identity register, or you can log in, which is going to auth identity with a password. So those are the two URLs you can use to access those identity pages. So now I can just reload this page here and see my two links here. And by the way, don't forget to restart the app to pick up the changes for the uh, provider. So let's first create an account here. And you can see this form here is a nice clean interface. Let's try filling this out here and then making a new record here. Now it automatically signed me in, brought me to my profile page here Notice it's using OmniAuth Identity here, so it works. 
Now let's check out the login, which looks similar and uh, just has two fields here, login and password. Now it's not very clear here, but the login uses the email address by default. You can customize that if you want to. And uh, if I just type in the password correctly, click connect and it signs me in successfully using the same user account. So this pretty much all just works. And because it uses the same OmniAuth interface, we don't really have to change any of our core application to get uh, OmniAuth identity working in our app. However, there are a few pitfalls you should be aware of. One big one is that if you have validations on your identity model here, they're not going to show up if validations fail when the user fills out this form. For example, let me add some validations to this identity model here. Uh, one being that making sure that the email address is formatted properly. So if I try filling this out with some invalid information and click connect, it's just going to take me right back to the same form without any message telling me what went wrong. So it's not a very good user experience by default. I won't be surprised if this is improved in the future, but in the meantime, something to be aware of. The other issue I have is on the login form here. It's not really clear to the user that in this login field, they're expected to type their email address to log in here. There are some options to customize the way this form looks, but nothing too extensive. All in all, I think it's better to uh, move those forms into the app itself that to lead to a better user experience. So let me show you how to do that here, starting with the login form. So instead of displaying a link to this login form here, let's just put this login form directly in line on this page. So we can just say, or login below. And then we can, uh, I'll just paste in some code here to do the login form. Notice here I'm using form tag, not form four, going directly to auth identity callback. That's what the login form normally submits to. And I'm passing the email address as an auth key. And then the password field goes there. And then just a button saying login. We'll check it out by reloading this page here. And there we go. Now we have a login form. Let's see if it works just like the other one did. And it does. So now we're signed in, log out, works just like we expect. So now we just have to tackle creating a new account. So we'll need to make a separate page which has a form similar to this one. I'll make that in a separate controller here and I'll call it identities. So generate that. And I consider this a resource. So inside of my routes file here, I'll make a new resources identities line for the routes there. And inside of this controller, I'll make an action called new. And there's a chance that if validation fails, the identity object will be stored inside of the rack environment called omniauth.identity and that way we can fetch it from there and then display any error messages on it. And I'll create a template for this, new html.arb, that looks good. Now there's quite a bit of code that needs to go inside of here, so I'm just going to paste this in, but don't get overwhelmed here because it's all pretty basic. Uh, here I'm just making a simple form tag, and uh, notice it's not form four here, just form tag that goes directly to auth identity slash register. And then right here, I'm just displaying the error messages on identity if there are any, and then uh, the rest here just displays the fields, uh, such as the name, email, and password, and I'm fetching the uh, identity value if there is one present for the value of the field. And that's it. One more change that I'll need to make is where I have the link to create a new account. And right here, that's going straight to OmniAuth, but instead I wanna go to the new identity path, so it goes to our new form we just made. So let's try this out by clicking on the create an account link. And now this brings us to that new account form that we just made. And this form will work great for creating new valid accounts. But however, there is a slight issue if you try to type in uh, information that's invalid and click on register, it's going to bring you back to the OmniAuth form instead of the form we just made. So we'll need to set this up to uh, go to our new form. And there's an option for just this occasion that we can set inside of our OmniAuth initializer file here where we set up our identity provider. The option is called on failed registration and we can set that to any rack application. So in this case, we need to set it to the identities controller new action. So that way it directs it there when there's a failure. However, there's one issue with this calling this directly inside of here and that is in development mode, it won't reload the new action here. So I think it's better to wrap this inside of a Lambda so that it does not um, automatically cache that action. And so it can reload it dynamically here by calling it through the Lambda. So we just need to call here, passing in through the environment, 
So this way our Lambda is the rec application that ends up calling our new action. Now you'll need to restart the Rails app to pick up that change, but once you do, let's try it out here. And if we type in some invalid information, register, then we get our error messages like we expect because it's triggering this action when there is a failure. Well, that wraps up this episode. Now that OmniAuth identity is working smoothly, it was a bit of code to move the forms in line, but it's still a really nice solution if you're using OmniAuth already and just want to add some account and registration. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful. In the pro episode this week, I will show you how to use Warden to move authentication up into the rack middleware. This allows you to access your authentication outside of Rails controllers, such as inside of your routes or in mountable engines. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.